Excellent. It's all yours. Okay. Um, well, good evening. Welcome, everybody. We're going to deal with northern Chile, the Atacama Desert. Um, you might think uh, the Atacama Desert is only the Atacama region, but it's not. It covers four regions in total. Um, just to give a quick start, uh, I have to do history. Um, and geography as well. Chile is quite a stable country in South America. You've seen the left-hand side map where it is. It's uh, shaped a bit like an early, which is named for it, um, with uh, the Andes being the border for the land and the Pacific, the, the western side, as you know, with the deep uh, subduction zone that it's with uh, on that coastal area. The population, it's one of the most prosperous countries in, in South America, um, but uh, and it's quite a stable country, but nevertheless, the gap between the rich and poor is one of the worst in the continent. And uh, that's why there have been demonstrations quite recently in the last year or two. Population's uh, over 17 million. Now the climate it varies as you'll see on the map on the right hand side. Um, there's a list of um, numbers there. The numbers were, were uh, equate to a, a region of the country. There's one to 15 and no number 13, obviously for superstitious reasons. Um, now, they say that the numbers were given by the Pinochet regime because they didn't know where such and such a place was, so it would uh, give them an idea if they gave them Roman numerals. Um, 
whether that's true or not, I'm not too sure. But anyway, the go from north to south, basically 1 to 15. The capital Santiago has a regional number of zero, um, but you'll notice that the one at the very northern point is 15, which is Arica and Parina Cota. Um, not sure why that one's 15 and maybe forgot about it, uh, although there may be a historical reason for that. The country stretch is 4,000 kilometres. At its uh, average size, it's about 70 to 80 miles in the width, which is very narrow. And uh, in region two there, Antofagasta region, it's at its maximum of about 120 miles. So you see it's a very long, narrow country and the climate uh, reflects that. The areas one, 15, one, two and three are, are the Atacama Desert area, which will cover in the two parts. The 15, the one and the two are the ones that will cover in this uh, presentation and number three and a little bit of number four in the next second section. Number 15 is called Arica and Parina Cota. Number one, Tarapacá. Number two, Antofagasta. And number three, the Atacama region. And number four is the Coquimbo region, which uh, you'll realise I've got mineral connections there. Now, um, the northern part is the desert area, those four I've mentioned. The middle section is a Mediterranean wine growing area, very uh, pleasant climate, except for the Andean uh, border area, which is up in the high Andes, so they've got lots of skiing and that. Down to the southern third, which is uh, full of uh, lakes and fjords and uh, glaciers. So there's quite a variation in the climate. Now, um, I should add that uh, in nine, 1870, there was a war between uh, Bolivia, which is the top right there, and Peru, which is uh, immediately north, who fought um, with Chile in what's called the Pacific War. Now, that war was uh, won by Chile, and they annexed, basically, the region 15, Arica and Parinacota, and region 1, Tarapacá. They annexed those from Peru, and Antofagasta, the second region, they annexed from Bolivia. Now, uh, it's it's reckoned that uh, there was a bit of trouble with the, the saltpeter industry, or nitrates, uh, with Britain, who were heavily involved there, with uh, Bolivia. And uh, Queen Victoria has said to say send the gunboats in, but uh, she was promptly told that they didn't have a coast anymore. So... Um, that has caused a lot of friction uh, through the years, um, but it's quite clear that all those people in those areas are actually fully Chileans. Now, the reason the war was brought about is because in Region 2, Antofagasta region, there's a famous silver deposit called the Caracoles, which in that time was part of Bolivia, and that's what caused the, the conflict. Now, um, that northern area uh, is also called the Norte Grande, which is, means the big north. And the Coquimbo district number four is called the Norte Chico, the little, Ch little north. Now, mining has occurred through the Inca times to present day. It's extremely important nowadays for Chile. And the discovery in the Atacama region of the silver deposit of Chana Sivio um, catapulted the country out of agricultural dependency into a modern state with uh, the mining interests, the mining industry being at the spearhead of that. Um, another little bit to put in the mix is uh, that uh, they have a lot of amateur miners, male and female, who in the Atacama region predominantly they are found and they scrape a living if they can out of the, the old uh, former prospects of the mines. They're called Pirquineros.
Now, uh, we'll start here a little bit of there. This is a, a cross section of the terrain. You'll see there's not a lot of green there. Um, at the very bottom uh, here, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Very bottom towards the, the bottom left near the coast, you've got the Guanaco Mines area, and up off the pop top right hand corner, almost off there, is the Chukicamata Mine. So it gives you a, a, a rough spread of uh, what the terrain is like in the roughly halfway through the area we're dealing with. Now, we should warn you that. Uh, It is an active mining area, so you'll need your hard hearts now and again. But uh, we come to the first region, Arica uh, Parinacota, which is very poorly occupied by mines, to be honest. There's two main deposits of interest, the Caleta Vitor mine area, which is the Santo Domingo and the Maria mine. The Santo Domingo mine is the one that's of interest. And then we have Los Camarones uh, Valley with the Cuya deposits or quarries. And uh, that is basically the two main areas of interest for collectors. Now, um, this is a part of the province that used to belong to Peru. Now, here's the Caleta Vitor. It's a lovely bay 40 miles away from the main road uh, to get to. Um, the actual mines is behind us. There's only one real mi mineral of interest, condite. Uh, here's a photo of it. They're absolutely minute crystals, but they're a lovely mint green color and tabular forms with quite interesting combinations of uh, parallel growing crystals and the like. Now, moving on from there, we have the Camarones district that I mentioned, which is another uh, area called the Cuya Quarries. And there they do a lot of sulphate mining and the amarantite here is the mineral for collectors that's of interest. They get quite good hand specimens, but uh, small crystals are not in the same league as what you get in the Catena mine, which is next to Chukicamata. So we'll Tarapaka region, which is uh, a lot more mines there. Um, if we go halfway down the coast there, you'll see Iquique. Now, that is the capital of that region. It's about over 200,000. Just about 30 miles inland from there, we have an interesting mine, the Santa Rosa mine. It's not actually marked for some reason. I've forgotten to do that. But... Uh, it's uh, about 40 miles inland from Iquique. Then going further south, slightly inland, we have uh, the Opacina Victoria area. Now, this was a big saltpeter area for nitrates, etc. over 100 years ago. There's a lot of vestiges of uh, remains of mines and things there. Um, one or two are quite elaborate. Uh, we'll come show a photo of one or two in a moment. The Victoria Segunda mine is a mineral mine that we'll look at. And then as we go further south towards the, the border of Antofagasta, we have the Salar Grande, which is a great salt plain, which is uh, thousands, millions or billions of tons of spare salt in reserves. The Torrethelius mine, which is a famous mine for a lot of uh, microcrystals of canutite, etc., We'll have to miss that, I'm afraid, um, but we'll visit the Hedi mine. Hedi, the, or as it's pronounced in Spanish, the Heidi mine, is actually the Spanish pronunciation for the girl's name, Heidi. So it's a Heidi uh, mine and Heidiite. Then before we cross into Antofagasta, we'll go inland towards Ant the Argentinian border, away down here in the far right where we have the Coyahuasi Mining District. It's a big, important district um, where the Copaquire Malta Mine are found. Now, towards the, the coast again, um, I will mention it, and I'll show a photo of it, but I won't uh, describe any of the minerals from it, is the Pavilion de Pica, 
uh, which is uh, quite well known for very rare um, ammonium minerals and, or, or nitrates called uh, things like joameite, arminiite, uh, shilovite, etc. Um, but uh, I'll show you a photo of it, but I don't have any. Uh, now, this is the Santa Rosa mine, the Huantaya mining district, as I mentioned, about 40 miles inland from the um, Iquique, the largest city and capital. Now, the Santa Rosa mine has got a couple of tight localities here. One of them, it's always very difficult to, to make it out. We have uh, San Romanite, which is a sodium calcium um, carbonate, lead carbonate. Um, you'll see there, they're sort of a bit like, uh, they're usually colorless, there's a bit of yellow tint in those. Um, a bit like hemimorphite, to be honest. Now, there's another photo here. You'll see them on the, the right-hand side there. Um, quite elongated, platy crystals. The dark green on the left is Atacama, and the paler green in the center area is chalconatronite. Uh, not as crystals, so. Now, the main mineral of interest here is the Santa Rosaite, which is a rare combination of chemistry. It's a copper borate. It's also the type of quality here, beautiful blue balls, um, which uh, are always tiny and uh, they're highly desired. Here, more of them, that's about a millimeter and a half across, to be honest, not to. Uh, very big to, to be fair. Moving south, we come to the Victoria Segunda mine, which is an area that I mentioned earlier, which has uh, got the saltpeter deposits, etc. Here we have a photo of chlorargite in the brown and the caledonite there with the blue, typical blue color of caledonite. Now, hand specimens of caledonite here. You wouldn't have thought there was uh, as many crystals in the world of caledonite and hand specimens. There's literally thousands and one specimen, hand specimen, if you get one. But uh, on typical elongated caledonite crystals, sometimes it's found resting with chlorargite and also with the gypsum and some have reported lead halite, but I have a doubt on that. It's a height of copper resting on caledonite. Very structural form there. And then we, then we come on to the, the Heidi mine, which is uh, a copper magnesium oxychloride. Lovely color. Um, they also are really very, very small crystals. That's about uh, three meets, millimeters across the, the photo. Now, uh, they do form interesting combinations and in parallel growth and things like that. There's a nice uh, fruit there of uh, steps growth habit. Uh, so they're quite attractive to have, to be honest with you. Now, um, we move inland, as I mentioned, to the border near Argentina, to the Coyahuasi Mining District. There's a Malta mine with ferrimolybdite, excellent crystals here, ferrimolybdite, iron molybdate. Um, and another one there. Uh, very, very good clear crystals, up to a few millimetres. Um, they're not uh, always small. They can be up to five, six millimetres at least. Now, into that area, to the Copakiri mines. Now, the photos uh, of chalcoalamite found there fairly recently. Um, it occurs in the sky blue colour and in white. 
The photo on the, the right hand side is a yellowy green colour. I assume that's uh, also chalcoalamite. I've not heard otherwise. It might be to do with the valency of the copper that has it in that colour, but uh, structurally it's not really any different from the other coloured material. The star of the show for the Kopakiri mine is the cyanotriptite, uh, which absolutely stunning royal blue colour. Um, it forms aggregates and also lovely little uh, blue balls. There with the paler blue chalcoalamite in association. Rockentite also occurs there as well. Um, as microcrystals, nothing uh, to write home about, though, in form. Now, this, this is a mine I mentioned that I won't uh, have uh, any description of the minerals. The rare nitrate or ammonium minerals, call, um, such as jalmite, uh, shilavite, bojarite, and uh, Aminiite, to mention just a few. They're all exceptionally rare and unusual because they're, it's, uh, they're copper ammonium minerals. And you see there in that photo, it's the, the deposit isn't actually the hill there, it's that white uh, flat area to the, to the right on the shore. Now, it's an interesting deposit and there's such rare minerals there because that's a guano deposit which is uh, contacted with a copper ore. So that's why you get ra these rare copper ammonium minerals. It's actually due to bird guano, which is percolated down to react with the copper ore, which I uh, uh, well, don't fancy. It. it doesn't appeal to me to collect there, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, um, I, I did say that we were coming on to, I wouldn't go to the, the Torre Sirius mine, I apologise for that, but uh, here we come to the Castor region. Now, uh, to go through all the regions by travel, you need to get your papers collected, it doesn't matter who you are, you need to get them stamped, just uh, go from one region to another. Now. What we'll do here is we'll go down the coast to Tokopelia, which is uh, the first uh, yellow circle there. We have inland from there the Maria Elena and Humberston deposits. Now they're old, again, nitrate deposits, but next to Maria Elena, there's a, a well known mine called the Chapacase mine. Um, going further down the coast there, place called Gatico, which is Kobika, Gatico, and Toldo. These, this is probably the, one of the most unfortunate places uh, for mines in the world, um, but uh, it's quite interesting because uh, we have a Santo Domingo mine there. It's given some interesting rare minerals. Further down again the coast, we'll go to Mejillones, which has uh, a lot of rare sulfate minerals in a few tight localities. Uh, we'll touch on a couple. There's the Branca del Sulfato and the Coronel Manuel Rodriguez mine. From there we come to Antofagasta and from there we'll go on the coast there to go on the road there from to two o'clock right up to the north east. Uh, there's a few stars up there. We'll touch on the Sierra Gorda Caracoles area, then on to the El Caparosa mine, uh, to Kalama, city of Kalama, and just north of that uh, city is the Chuquicamata mine. Uh, away over in the, the right hand side, there's a deposit of Laco Mountain, which we won't uh, show anything of, but it's interesting because the, the mountain is made base is a volcano and it's a uh, composed of basically magnetite. Now, um, to the south of Kalama, we have a big uh, salt pan area, they call the Salar de Atacama. This is a uh, typical of one of the areas that is currently mining for lithium and for boron. 
Now, um, it's done in the old fashioned, like uh, salt panning method. Um, nothing super fancy, to be honest, except for the actual processing. Now, back down the coast to Antofagasta, just south of Antofagasta, there's a couple of deposits there of active mines, which have produced some things. Uh, Aguas Blancas mine, which is not noticed there, it's near the junction there of uh, the roads south of Antofagasta, which is halfway down the coast. Um, there's uh, the Aguas Blancas mine, which has produced uh, some sea ligerite specimens. And if we move inland halfway towards Argentina, there's the uh, Escondida mine, which was the scene of a uh, infamous uh, specimens of Lecontite and Salamoniac, which you may remember, the the brilliant blue with the, the very rare Lecontite crystals perched on top. Um, but uh, we'll not, uh, we'll touch on that. But uh, back down the coast, we come to the Tal Tal area towards the Atacama region border, where um, Again, there's a big salt panning, uh, not salt panning, solitary on nitrates area about 100 years ago. And then inland from there, there's a couple of stars there, we have the Gonaco mines, which we'll have a look at as well. So let's get cracking. The solitary industry, Humberston, which has got a mineral named after it, nothing more than a white powder, though, uh, named after an Englishman who developed a a big, uh, what they call station there, a salt, uh, solitary station, which is a big uh, town, to be honest, that uh, had all the mod coins, swimming pools, theatres, cinema, etc. No more. It's being retained, though, as a, a, a heritage site, which uh, a lot of sites in the arid desert are just left to, to the whims of the climate. But uh, there's another one, Maria Elena which is uh, next to there, we have the Chapacasi mine, or as it's also known as the Santa Ana mine, but uh, that gets confused if you call it Santa Ana mine with one in Caracolis. Anyway, the wolfenite crystals there are supposed to be very chromium rich. They're found with mimetite, iranite, um, and Phoenicocroite. There's some Phoenicocroite there, um, with a lot of tiny bits of uh, wolfenite crystals all over it. Very striking colour, and it's uh, quite desirable. It's a bit like uh, the silver sulphur salts. It's a, a lead chromate mineral. The uh, Interesting thing is that some of the Phoenicia cochroite there is partly altered to wolfenite, a bit peculiar. Um, there, there's a crystal there with partially alteration on the bottom half and the left hand side. Uh, it's an association with mimetite. Now we come to uh, the Gatico area of, of the Tocopilla province of Antofagasta. As I mentioned, this is probably one of the most misfortunate places for mining uh, in history because uh, there's a Cobija deposit, which is four kilometers along the bay here, which was the main mining area. And it was a port during the times of Bolivia owning this area. Now, it, uh, mining cont continued there, but it suffered a tsunami and much of the deposit was destroyed. So for safety, they moved it along four kilometers along the coast on the Gatico. It has been mining off and on, but most of it was destroyed by flooding and by an earthquake. So it's uh, not the luckiest place to be. Now, there is a lot of ruins here which have been left just to go to the whims of the, the climate, but uh, there is plans to bring it uh, 
into a heritage site. There's a building there in the left there, you'll see photo in the dis middle distance there. That's an old English mansion, to be honest. <laughs> Stuck in the desert coast there. Now, this area, this Santo Domingo mine, you get to some interesting minerals. Cumminjite is a lead copper oxychloride, if I'm correct. Uh, it, quite rich there if you find it. It's also diabolia is found there as well. Um, there's a nice big crystal there. That's about one millimeter at the most. I don't know if that's a bit of crust on it or an alteration there, that white blob, but uh, I think it's a crust actually. Um, that's uh, quite a nice pyramidal crystal. They're not always quite as rich in blue as that, but uh, you do get some well-formed crystals of, of common type there. So, um, this photo is a uh, tabular crystals of colourless transparent cotonite, and uh, you see the blue blobs there. They're probably inclusions of cumminjite, although it could be diabolite, I'm not clear on which. Uh, cotonite's a, a peculiar lead mineral. Um, move, moving on, we've got cornelite. It occurs there, not always very well formed, but when it does form crystals, they're quite solid actually, prisms and you get them in the typical radiating halides. Another rarity uh, familiar to Cornish collectors is Vitalakite there. You'll see a few Vitalakite, that is a bit of a rarity for that occurrence. But uh, it is found there. We come to Mechelione's district for down the coast. We've got the Bar Barranca del Sulfato and the Manuel Rodriguez mine. Uh, we have, I think it's a Belgian type locality, Destiné site. It's an iron phosphate sulfate. Um, they're better than the Belgian ones, I believe, and they form whiny brown crystals there, actual crystals. Did you see some there with? Uh, Copiapite in association. Uh, there is a few other rare minerals at this site. You've got Tinsleyite uh, as well, and a few tight localities of, of others. Um, another one is Cydronatrite there, a, a sodium iron hydrate sulfate. Um, Sticking on uh, copiapite. That might actually be meta cider or not, right? It's a large crystal, that's about at least uh, five millimeters, that one. So some of the smaller ones are a lot, are actually transparent, so that's why I think it's maybe meta cider or not, right? Um, and moving down onto the coast, and I'm not going to actually visit it, but in the Hayes there is the city of Antofagasta, it's about just over a third of a million. Uh, on the right hand side there you see some of the dock facilities, but uh, it has uh, gained its uh, importance from mining in the last hundred years and even more so now. It's called the Peril of the North, uh, not the deadly peril, but the peril in the oyster it's uh, become a magnet for immigration as well from other South American countries looking for jobs in the mining industry, which are not always there, to be honest. So from there we'll move inland, as I say, northwest dimension, northeast, sorry, and uh, we come to the Sierra Gorda and Caracoles district. As I mentioned, Caracoles was the uh, initiator of the uh, uh, dispute over it brought on the Pacific War. Uh, lovely scenery there, not much green to be seen. Um, very desert conditions. The Sierra Gorda has a new 
uh, mining deposit coming on has actually come on stream that's called the Sierra Gorda mine, which is Japanese and Polish investment. So that's uh, quite an interesting one. But Caracoles is riddled with old mines, several of them quite well known. Um, here we're into sulfate territory uh, in a big fashion. It's interesting to note that uh, Sierra Gorda is a tight locality for Caracolite, and Caracolis is a tight locality for Gordaite, which is very helpful to be honest. But uh, anyway, and in these, uh, as I say, there's so many mines in this area, I can only mention a couple that are stand out. Caracolite there, they're usually transparent crystals, but that's a uh, a white crystal um, from the Compania mine, which is quite a well-known mine there in that region. Coming on, we have Boleite, which, uh, unlike the Mexican material, also from the Compania mine, uh, are quite um, gemmy and transparent, and a nice uh, paler blue than the Mexican material. Um, you get quite rich crusts of microcrystals um, and uh, it's uh, very attractive from there. There's another photo. No. Nice contrast in the white with the green, uh, which I think is um, broken tight, I think it is. Now, very natrite, also from the company of mine, that is the actual type locality for it. Another sulfate, a sodium iron sulfate hydrate. It is crystals are very like apatite, which are uh, hexagonal prisms of pyramidal faces. They are get to about up to about uh, 15 millimeters, but they're usually much smaller. There are uh, some of them do alter. I think the yellow there isn't uh, so much an alteration as a bit of copiapite, but they do alter to a yellow colour sometimes um, in an unstable environment. Some of the crystals also have inclusions of gold, which is quite interesting. Also on the boleite specimens, you do get gold as well. So careful when you clean it, can, uh, they can also just brush off the gold if you're cleaning it. It's a tight locality and the world's best for the species. Another mineral uh, from the area, company of mine again, is Changoite, which uh, they look like quite decent sized crystals, but they don't really have much of a form to them. They're quite irregular, rounded, and you can't make out the faces very easily. They're usually greyer, um, those are a bit yellow, but you do get them a yellow tone. It's Changoite, it's a sodium uh, zinc sulfate from the company of mine again. Um, it's named after the tribe, the Changos, that lived next to the Atapagasta coastal area and lived on fishing, basically, uh, pre-Inca times. Uh, um, this is uh, from the Salvadora mine. Caledonite is pseudomorph to Chrysocolla there, or Chrysocolla, I think you might say in America. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's quite unusual there. Some of them are partially altered and some are completely altered, but uh, it's quite unusual to see it's pseudomorph. But uh, you do get them as actual crystals, uh, not pseudomorph there. There's one example. Um, that's about like most of these photos are anything between two, four millimeters broad across. Um, it's quite a nice uh, couple of crystals there. Come and make out. Uh, Paratacamite, uh, the nice big looking crystal there um, from the Vendida mine which is uh, produced very recently two or three tight localities like uh, Vendidaite to, to 
just name one. Um, the crystals there are generally very small crusts of crystal, not very large. Good for micro mountains. There's a, a, a druse of them there, about three, four millimeters across. So you can see they are very small. Uh, Cronkite from the company of mine. The type of quality is at uh, Chuki Kamata, just up the road, sort of thing. But uh, the Cronkite crystals here are, at the company of mine are probably the best. Very interesting forms, lovely prisms, uh, elongated, striated crystals, sometimes quite thick and quite narrow. Um, in the ordinary light they look green uh, like a pale emerald color and then when you put them under the, the lights they go to this uh, blue caledonite blue there's a, a nice group of uh, parallel growing crystals And here's Gordaite from the San Francisco mine, another uh, sodium zinc sulfate. They're all, uh, always a pastel duck egg pale colour, uh, hexagonal in form, sometimes quite well formed, sometimes not so. You get them in white, white as well though. Um, distinctive, uh, they have a pearly luster, as you see here in this photo. That's a, a group of uh, stepped parallel growing crystals there, um, definite pearly luster. Herbert Smithite, which is another zinc uh, mineral, although it's not sulfate, copper uh, zinc oxychloride from the San Francisco mine. Uh, Herbert Smithite, it's named after the discoverer of believe of paratacamite. Um, the crystals can be transparent, more transparent green, but generally I've found them to be very dark bottle, deep bottle green and uh, quite hard to take a photograph of to be honest. They're not easy, they're usually just a couple of two, three millimeters at most. And then we come on to late tonight, which I think uh, Chuki Kamata is a tight locality of, but the Salvadora mine has probably produced the best specimens. It's a potassium, calcium, copper, sulfate, hydrate there. Uh, has that distinctive pastel sea green colour. Uh, very good crystals from this deposit uh, in association with paratacalmite very often, and uh, even boleite. Pseudoboleite, uh, we're getting into the high resolution here for me, which is, uh, that's about one meter, millimeter across. Quite uh, good striations though on that one. And uh, I believe um, paraboleite is also and this is the Santa Catalina mine. Uh, Silurite, which is the Santa Ana mine, which we mentioned not to be confused with the Chapacasi mine. Uh, and just to confuse things more, it's also known as the Beatrice mine. Silurite is very interesting. It's uh, a lead iodate chloride, which uh, there's a few iodate minerals here, which are unique virtually to the world, not all of them, but a few. The sea ligerite it can go to a deep browny colour, it tends to be Schwarzenbergite. And Paralaurianite, which is uh, actually it's from a Margarita mine, which is a unique mine for uh, northern Chile because it's actually a lead mine. You don't see many of them up here. Uh, it's found there as not a slag mineral, but as a natural secondary alteration mineral, not, not for slag, I'm afraid. Slag, the collectors. Um, 
the crystal there is about one millimeter and it's got a few uh, diabolite crystals there as well the margarita mine is also famous for a few other minerals and there's kenfieldite which i believe is some magical qualities according to some but uh, there's a lovely uh, hex transparent hexagonal barrel shaped crystal with uh, diabolii inclusions uh, resting on some cotonite from the margarita as well now uh, penfieldite forms another sheet of crystal at this mine we have here what is these the elongated uh, spindle-like crystals with a, a, an upturned curvature at the end there very strange um, it's very typical for it at, at uh, penfield light um, again it's not a slag mineral here it's just the secondary alteration moving on to the calcapa rosa mine at saritas fires uh it is just up the coast up up, up the the road we have Halotrichite there, which we're all quite familiar with. Uh, Metavoltine, another rare sulphate mineral. I believe it tends to darken quite often. It's a browny, oily green colour. Um, but uh, hexagonal crystals. Always very small. Fibroferrite, which is... Uh, somebody's hair hasn't been combed correctly um, but that's probably the best site for it if it's not the tight locality the El Caparosa mine not to be confused with El Caparosa mine in Argentina Parabutley right with copiapite there orange crystals they difficult to see the complete forms of them the Actual butlerite seems to be a mystery, not to be found anywhere near enough. But parabutlerite is uh, forms these orange crystals at uh, the El Caparosa mine. Another one is a, a, a potassium iron aluminium sulfate voltaite, striking black crystals, and um, they're found elsewhere. Um, they usually form pyramidal crystals, as you see the smaller ones at the bottom there, but that's a larger, more complex crystal. Coquimbite, named after the region to this further south, uh, it does form prisms. That is a prism there, not easy to make out, with the copiapite, and it also forms more tabular crystals here, as you see with the reflected light. Um, they're not as good as the ones from Peru that uh, the Javier Ortega mine that uh, have come out in recent times. And before we reach the city of Calama, we come to Catena mine, which is basically part of the Chuquicamata complex. The Amarantite here is probably amongst the best in the world. It's an iron sulfate hydrate. Uh, very striking uh, red colour. There's groups of them there. Uh, background is cronkite, so that helps bring them out. And there's even some aerial chalcite green uh, on some specimens, but not, not as crystals. So we come now to the Chukikamata mine, uh, which is probably famous or well known to all of you. So I'll just read out one or two quick facts about it. It's uh, been mining for almost 120 years. Chuki Kamata itself means land of the Chukis, which is a, a tribe there. It's uh, closed 10 years ago, but it's due to reopen as a modern subterranean mine uh, in the next year or two. It was the second largest open cast mine in the world, three kilometres by one and a half across, and a depth of over 300 metres. Tight locality for some very rare secondary minerals, including rare uh, iodates, and some exclusive only to the locality. Uh, the transformation to them, to it being a subterranean mine, is due to the costs of. Uh, 
actually getting the ore to the surface. Uh, it costs so much money to take it to the surface that uh, along with the, the, the waste, they couldn't, uh, had to move to a different process with uh, underground. The uh, gigantic operation is uh, the, the lorries are huge, 320 tons they could carry, uh, GPS uh, coordinated, and some of the stuff there and a few collectors en route. Um, some of the minerals, antlerite, I think we're running short time, so I'll move on quickly. Antlerite, they're lovely uh, crystals, green, uh, but you do get them quite blacky green as well. Uh, a lot of striations on the faces. Atacamite is not a common enough uh, mineral there, really, but Chukikamata, and certainly not in the lead of the Parola mine. Uh, the green material is uh, Bellingerite, which is a copper iodate mineral, very rare, unique to there, along with a bluey green uh, salicite crystal, salicite or salicite, however you want to call it. Uh, cuprite, uh, very dark wine red crystals, and you see what usually straightforward cubes. But the crystal there, the bottom face there is a stepped uh, growth on that face there. Quite intriguing. That's more like how they actually are. Uh, typical, fairly straightforward cubic crystals or variations. Chalcanthite, very good crystals from there, um, embedded in the massive material. Some striking colours to them as well. That might not all be chalcanthite, maybe some uh, cronkite and melanthorite as well. Energite is the main ore mineral from the mine. Um, you do get a lot of small crystals, or can get a lot of small crystals, along with pyrite, which uh, are just they're good small crystals, but they're not uh, in the same class as the energite hand specimens that you would get from Peru. Marshite, I think you're aware of that in Australia as well. Um, this is nice and yellow because it's in the base of a cuprite specimen. So that's why it's maintained its color because they tend to go red to brown uh, color. Natural chart only found here. It's quite interesting that they have a angular striations on their faces. Uh, you see it more in this, the uh, small crystal in the bottom left has angular striations and you see also in the bigger crystal and through the reflected light, there's also angular striations there. They're never more than a, about two millimeters at the rest, to be honest with you, they're very small. And you get crusts of crystals, it's quite common. Uh, very known this fruits, but uh, you get a lignite there as well, and the brown jarosite. Pyrolite is uh, quite a star mineral there, lovely pyramid of crystals, uh, sherry coloured, very nice, um, associated with that of and and brockentite. There's a very nice uh, semi-transparent crystal in the candy. Uh, pyrite with a basic cube with uh, angular striations. Salicite and marshite again there. Salicite is another single site uh, type locality iodine mineral, copper iodate, uh, lovely blue caledonite type colour. There we are, double termination on those. Quite a variation in forms. The big one there is almost five millimeters, and it's a, I think it's a composite crystal, doubly terminated. Mineral. Sampleite is a sampleite is a tech 
tight locality at Tegekamata, but it's not in the same league as the stuff that you get in the Atacama region, the Enganyu Police Line. As I mentioned, there's the salt deposits there that set the mining lithium in Bolron. I'm getting near the end. Uh, Minera Escondida is where the blue so in the the uh, what do you call them? the pools there, it's, uh, settling pools. They had the chalcanthite and laconite uh, mineral specimens. Laconite, I think it's only found in Honduras uh, elsewhere. Uh, Bat Association, but it's uh, one of these uh, peculiar ammonium minerals. Now, Santa Catalina District, as I mentioned, is the actual uh, area where the uh, saltpeter was mined again in the southern edge of the Atacama province. Some of the minerals there are the Gonaco mine, just further inland from there, uh, Ceruleite and the Blue and Schlossmacherite, which are both uh, always uh, massive, I'm afraid. He's a mercenary. The Gonaco mines are mining gold, though, uh, with investment from Israelis uh, as a, a prominent feature. Uh, there's one or two crystals there, partly altering at the bottom to Conichal site that's associated there's, uh, with bear and bladed crystals. Conichal site with arborite again, uh, more globular. Also, as globular aggregates, you get the zeolomarite, which are uh, different from uh, the arborite balls. They're quite spiky with uh, crystal groups there. You may be able to make them out in the smaller crystals at the bottom there. Uh, again, with conichal oxide in association. These make very spectacular microcrystal uh, specimens because of the colors. Uh, guanacoite type locality occurs in almost a secular to blades, sky blue blades. Lama right, there's two free crystals there, one on the left and two uh, pyramidal hanging down the opposite direction basically. Difficult to photograph, very dark green again and quite often in aggregates it's uh, difficult to make out what they are. It's quite similar. Uh, mineral, but uh, it's a uh, different shape, which is fine there. Technicality here's a gypsum crystal with inclusions of the Vendeline, uh, the Manskyite, which is similar to the Vendeline, nice sharp blue crystals. But you do get uh, common minerals there as well barite and diodardrite, little art, black uh, dark. Uh, octahedral uh, iodardrite crystal and barite you do get uh, small hand specimens in the events. and uh, as I mentioned as we move into the next region the Atacama region the Purkineros are the, the artisanal miners uh, they just set up in any old place basically and uh, they have the rights to the place handed down through family often and uh, former miners at different mines in the past and they try to scrape a living and uh, that's the end of it we come on to the uh, thank you very much thank you Jay um, I have nice. a question for you uh, what were you doing in Chile I have a lot of friends in Chile that past 40 years I've had uh, connections with Chile and friends and things, you know, so. And I also studied the Latin American studies at university, so that's where a lot of it all comes in. Yeah. Uh, uh, I thought maybe you were working over there at some stage or something. No. Uh, do we have any questions for Jane? I'm sorry, it was a bit rushed at the very end, but no, I saw no, the no. time was moving on. It was fine, it was good. 
I, I have a, a question just wondering if you have any information about the the geology of the area, how these mineral deposits formed? Yeah, they're nearly all copper porphyry deposits uh, from the stocks caused by the uplift of the, uh, from yeah. the subduction zone, basically. Mm. But they are mostly copper porphyry deposits, sometimes copper gold and sometimes some molybdenum is mixed in with it as well. Are the, um, it, what are the co collecting conditions like? Are they contemporaneous with mining or is it mostly post mining um, when the, the mines are closed? Yeah, it's post mining mostly, yes. But um, sometimes you get access, you know, the, there is a, sometimes you get a permit or so to, to one or two places, but no, you, it's usually a, a guided tour that you could get to any of these operational mines and, and not actually collecting, you know, just getting shown what this and that is. You know. Sightseeing. <laughs> yeah, it's better than nothing. Uh, just in terms of, of um, Chilean minerals, I know that uh, the micro room at the Tucson show, I think it's Bob Jenkins, maybe, that um, uh, usually has quite a selection of, of uh, minerals from Chile. Mm -hmm. um, minerals from Chile available, and uh, certainly I've got a few over there when I've been to Tucson. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm not... He actually. I've never been to. I've never been to two so That's fair enough. He, he worked there uh, for a mining company, and that's oh, how he yeah. his material. Yeah, I should have said that the the, the like Tukikamata, they they were big mining camps with the modern facilities, the hospitals, and supermarkets and things for the miners. But uh, the actual. Uh, bosses shall we put it were all usually foreigners americans and they never they never the two met you know they were different totally different uh, locations to live in and, and socialize you know these mining camps are, are almost gone there's one uh, left i think at el salvador which is is uh, built like a, a roman amphitheater to be honest quite spectacular but that's in the second part of the Atacama region. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other questions for Jane? I'll take that as a no. All right. Um, on that basis, then we'll have a break for four weeks. Hopefully get to see you all back for Jane's part two. Yeah, the Atacama region, basically. Yep. Which would be yep. one or two others. Uh, Frank, Frank's a very happy chappy. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I own quite a lot of Chilean uh, minerals from the area she described. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More to come. <laughs> That's right. good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again, Jane. That, that's excellent. Okay, you're welcome. No and um, we'll see everybody in four weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, thank, so. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.